Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In this video for Elementor Pro we're going to be checking out the latest update and what that brings to the Forms widget. Now the Forms widget has been a really powerful widget that allows us to not only create great looking and easy to use forms, but it's also given us the ability to link that through to various different aftermarket services like MailChimp and so on. They recently updated that and brought a range of other options in there. Well, they've updated the forms element again and given us some new field options. So in this video, I'm just going to briefly run through those new additions, show you what's been added to it and show you how this can really enhance the power of the Elementor forms. And at the end of the video, I'm going to give you my feedback on what I think of this addition and what I think really needs to be added into it to make it a really fully fledged form kind of plugin that replaces some of the other options that are out there. So, let's take a look at that in action right now. So like I say, this is an Elementor Pro video. So if you don't have Elementor Pro, you're just using the free version, you're not going to get access to the Forms widget. You need to have Pro. If you don't have Pro and you're considering purchasing it, please consider using the affiliate links in the description below. It doesn't cost you any more money, but it gives a little bit back to the channel and helps support us and it helps us make more content for you. Anyway, let's take a look at what this offers. Let's just add in a form widget. You can see all the normal options we're kind of used to. It creates a default form with a name, email and message. All pretty straightforward, all pretty standard. So let's take a look at what we can do and let's take a look at some of the new options. So at the moment, we'll leave that as is. Let's just go and add a new item in there. We'll name this something else. So instead of item 4, we're going to come in and we'll just give that a name of upload file. So, that should give you an idea of what we can do first of all. That's the ability now we can start uploading files as part of our form. So if you're sort of offering a service where you want someone to send you a CV or you want them to send you a file of some variety, then this gives you that option. You can also have some control over exactly what is going to be sent to you and what they can and can't do. So if we take a look, you can see all the different options are available now and all we need to do is go down to File Upload and that will now open up all the options that are available for uploading files as part of our form. So you can see we've got type file upload, we've given it a label, is it required? Entirely up to you, so you can make that a mandatory field or you can make it an optional field, exactly what you want to do with it. You then have the max file size and you can see we've got a range of different options in there. Now even though this kind of goes up to 100 megabytes, you are still going to be restricted to the server that you're on and any limitations that that has. Now by default, most servers sort of limit these things to 8 megabytes. So if you don't know how to change this, then I'd recommend contacting your hosting company and asking them to update things and give you a little bit more headroom should you need it. But like I say, that option is in there, so you can limit it. So if you have 8 megabytes, for example, but you want to limit people to 4 megabytes, well, you can easily do that by choosing an option like this. Next up, we have the allowed file types, and you can see it gives us some examples like JPEG, GIFs, PDF, and so on. So what you can do is you can restrict the file types that are allowed to be uploaded to give you a little bit of security and stop people uploading files that are not relative to what you want them to send to you. So you simply just put in the abbreviation, PDF for example, if you want to sort of put multiple file types in, simply separate them by a comma and add as many as you need to in there. You also have the option as well for multiple files. So you may want to give someone the option to upload more than one file. If you check that, you can see we've got the maximum number of files and we can go in and say for example three and that will allow us then to sort of go in and add three files. So that's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. If we jump to the Advanced tab, you can see we've got some custom IDs in there like we normally have with any of the form fields. So if we needed to reference those, we can create a custom ID and reference it in various different ways. We also have short codes we can apply to this. I'm not going to worry too much about that, but that gives you an idea of how easy it is to go in and add file upload functionality into your Elementor Pro form fields. So the next field type we have are acceptance fields. Now if you've ever worked with e-commerce, for example WooCommerce, then you know that you have an option in there that says when someone goes to the checkout process to be able to continue and actually make a purchase, they need to check a box that says that they agree to your terms and conditions or your privacy policy or whatever page you want them to agree to before they can go any further. This is one of those things that's quite useful and can cover you in the eventuality of any kind of dispute. But we can now add that with Elemental Forms. So again, if we come in and add a new item, click to choose the type of item, and you can see if we open that up, we have Acceptance. So we can click on that. Again, we can go in and give it a name. So Accept 
terms for example gives us a little radio box we can check that if we need to specify whether this is required and again we've got acceptance text so we can say you know whatever you want to put in there you know by accepting these terms and conditions you agree to blah 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 whatever you want obviously the required option is very useful if you use it for something that specifies that they have to agree to this before they can move on and continue and send the form and so on so you can make that a required field you can also specify as checked by default. So if you wanted to sort of subscribe someone to a newsletter or something and you're saying, you know, you need to accept this, well, you can have it sort of set to be checked by default. Again, whatever you kind of want, but it's nice to see this addition has been added in there. So moving on, the next option we have is a date field. So again, we can come in, add a new item, open that out and choose date. So we click on there, you can see now we've got a lot of the normal options we have like labels and placeholders and so on and required. But we can also specify things like the minimum date and the maximum date. So if you want to specify they can only put in a specific date range, well you can add that in at this point, which is quite cool. You can also go through and specify whether it uses native HTML5 or not. Now this is something that's quite useful if you're, you want to give maximum compatibility, especially when you're dealing with things like mobile phones and so on. If by default the HTML5 is going to be on, but you can also force your browser on whatever device people are using to ensure that uses the native HTML5 option as well. So again, really nice to see that option available in there. Jump to the advanced tab and you can see we've got the normal things like the custom ID again and the short code. So that gives us the ability to easily go in and start adding in date fields. Now in addition to date fields we've also got the option now to add in time fields. So if you're creating some form of booking where you want someone to book a day and a time you can now do that natively inside the Elementor widget. So let's take a look at that in action. Let's add a new field in come down again we're going to choose the option we want which this time is going to be time again you can see we've got label and placeholder required we could force html5 in there as well so it's a very very easy simple kind of way of working so if i just update this page let's take a look at these in action how the actual date and the time fields display so let's just shrink that down so we kind of get a live preview so the first field we've got is the date field so you can see pops up in a nice looking date picker so we can go through we can pick that out from there choose the date and it puts it in in the relevant format and again the same thing goes if we want to go in and add in the time we can do that very easily a nice simple way of working in there all very simple and straightforward making sure that we've got the right format to go through so very easy, nothing complex about these new additions, but it is great to see them added into the Elemental Forms option. So before I wrap this video up, let's take a look at the last option that's been added into our forms. Let's click and add a new item in again, expand that out and choose the type. Now you can see we have an option for HTML and if we access that, you can see we've got the type HTML is set in there, a label if you want to apply that. But what we can also do is apply custom HTML code in here. So if we want to go in and customize various form elements, we can do that directly inside the form widget. So you can see if we take a look on screen, there is no content being displayed. This allows us to create custom HTML content. So very, very easy way of working and quite a cool addition to the new form element widget inside Elementor Pro. And that kind of wraps up all the new options that have been added in. This should give you a really large, expansive way of working with forms and cut back your reliance upon third-party plugins. But that kind of leads me on to some of the things that I think are missing from this widget and I think would really help if you did sort of look at adding these in the future to take away the reliance upon third-party plugins and cut down the amount of plugins you need just to be able to manage forms that are a little bit more advanced than just basic sort of contact forms. Now one area that I really think would be great to see in a future update to Elementor Pro and the Forms widget is the ability to add in conditional logic. Now conditional logic is great if you sort of say that, well, if you choose this option, then this other option opens up. But if you don't choose it, don't display it. So your forms kind of take on a more logical progression and kind of just cleans up some of the clutter that may be in there where you can't use conditional logic. This is something I really would like to see included in a future update. Something else that I think would be useful is the ability that when a form is submitted that that data is saved into a database table that allows you then to access that information from the back end of your website. This is something that can be really useful where you want to manage and see all the content that's been uploaded just in case, for example, something gets blocked, something doesn't get through, through your email account for example, you have access to that information as part of your website. An option would be great. 
I know you can use additional plugins to do this kind of thing, but an out-of-the-box option, which is just a simple checkbox that says store this information in the database for future use, and then access that via the back end of your website would be really, really, really great to see as part of Elementor. Again, to cut down the requirement for either hacking things yourself or going through and adding in extra plugins on top of what you've already got in installed as part of Elementor and your security and so on. So that's something else I'd really like to see in a future update. Well, that pretty much wraps up this video covering the latest update to Elementor Pro and what's been added to the Forms widget. I hope you found the video useful. I hope it's given you insight into what you can do and how we can expand the functionality that's already been there. Well, if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. Hit the bell icon to be notified every time we do add new content. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video, please pop those in the comment section below and don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Until next time, take care.